What are the best distributions that are based on Ubuntu? That's what I'm going to discuss today. I'm going to give you my top five Ubuntu based distributions. And when I say Ubuntu based distributions, I mean I'm going to discount Ubuntu, mainline Ubuntu, and all of the official flavors of Ubuntu because they're also part of the Ubuntu family. The Ubuntu team works on, you know, Kubuntu, Zubuntu, Lubuntu, Ubuntu Mate. I'm, I'm throwing all of those out and we're going with Ubuntu based distributions that are actually built by teams other than the Ubuntu team or the folks that work for Canonical. And I'm going to share with you these distributions that I have a lot of experience with because I install Linux on a lot of machines and I'm talking about friends machines, family members machines, people bring me their Windows laptops and I give them Linux. So these are brand new to Linux users and I have probably installed Linux hundreds of times on various people's equipment. And one of the cool things that I have found is I've experimented with a lot of different distributions depending on the person uh, that's giving me their computer to put Linux on it, you know. And I found that some Linux distributions are better than others as far as for that kind of brand new to Linux user. So today I'm going to share with you my top five Ubuntu based Linux distributions, especially for the new to Linux user. Coming in at number five on my list of top five Ubuntu based distributions is Zorin OS. Now Zorin OS is a very attractive distribution. It's very reminiscent of the Windows desktop because it has a classic bottom panel with a start menu. You got the Zorin logo here, clearly tells a new user exactly where the menu system is. It has quick launchers, it has a sys tray in the panel. So any Windows user is going to feel right at home in Zorin OS. Now, the desktop environment that they're using is this really hybrid custom desktop environment that they've built on top of GNOME. It's also got some XFCE components, but it's a very unique and a very polished desktop environment. As a matter of fact, I would say it's one of the most unique desktops available on Linux. And of course, if you want to change the layout of the desktop environment, if you don't like the bottom panel, there are other layouts available. If I get into the menu system and I search for appearance, go to Zorin appearance, and that's going to to open this layout menu here where we can actually change the appearance of the desktop layout. Now depending on what version of Zorn OS you're running you're going to have maybe two layouts maybe four layouts available to you. I am using Zorin Lite here which is a free version of Zorn OS but Zorin also has a pro version and the pro version costs $39 and with the $39 pro version you do get some more layouts you also get more artwork it comes with a uh, some additional software pre-installed for you. It also includes installation support if you have problems installing Zorin OS. So that's a really nice feature, especially for the new to Linux user. Maybe you've never installed a Linux distribution before. You know, paying Zorin OS $39, of course, it's a good thing to do because it helps fund the development of Zorin OS, but it's also nice to have that support should you need it. Now, one really interesting aspect to Zorin OS is the fact that it really does cater to Windows users. Users. If I get into the menu system and I search for Windows app support and let me hit enter and it's going to open our software center, essentially our app store where we go and install new software and you can see it's going to install Windows app support. What this is, is this installs Wine and Play on Linux. For those of you not familiar with what Wine is, it's kind of a Windows emulator. It's technically not an emulator, but it allows you to run Windows software inside Linux. Now, not everything runs inside of Wine, but a lot of Windows programs actually run quite well inside this Wine compatibility layer. Overall, I found Zorin OS to be great installing on new Linux users' machines because at the end of the day, what is the most important thing? The most important thing is that everything just works, and that's kind of what Zorin OS is. It's a distribution where you install it and everything typically just works. Number four on my list of top five Ubuntu based distributions is Linux Lite. I've installed Linux Lite many times on friends and family computers, and I've never had anyone that had an issue with this distribution, especially for the new 
to the Linux user, you're coming from Windows. I mean, you can tell that they really put a lot of thought and effort, especially for Windows users, because look at this panel. Look at this start menu. I mean, you have instead of just a logo, the Feather logo for Linux Lite, you have the word menu written out to the side of it. So there's no way a user is going to be confused where exactly is the menu system, right? It, it'll let you know up front. And of course, you've got your quick launchers, your taskbar, your workspace switcher, your system tray all built into the panel. It has an excellent welcome screen. Uh, when you first install Linux Lite, the welcome screen automatically launches on startup every time you log in. Now you can disable it to where it doesn't automatically show up every time you log in. But you can always find the welcome screen in the menu system. Just search for the word welcome. One of the things I really have to give Linux Lite credit for is it probably is one of the best looking, if not the best looking, XFCE desktop environment I've ever seen. And many of you guys are probably going to be surprised that this is XFCE because it is such an attractive desktop. I mean, this menu system and the panel and everything. If I didn't tell you that this was XFCE, you might think this is a much more uh, modern, uh, forward looking desktop environment such as GNOME or Plasma. Some other things that really make Linux Lite stand out is because it uses XFCE, it is very lightweight, it's very fast, so it's really good on pretty much any modern modern piece of hardware. And by modern, I mean anything that was built within the last 10 years for sure. The Linux Lite is going to run like a champ on. It also has a really nice suite of applications. And by nice suite of applications, I mean it has a lot of stuff pre-installed. So this is nice, especially for the new user who doesn't know all of the software that's available out there in the Linux space. So, you know, you're going to get a full suite of applications installed here in Linux Lite. Ultimately, the reason Linux Lite makes my list here of the best Ubuntu-based distributions is because Linux Lite, I think, is maybe the best distribution out there that dispels the myth that Linux has to be hard. Linux doesn't have to be hard. Linux can be made to be easy, made to be simple, and I think this is a shining example of that. Number three on my list of top five Ubuntu-based distributions is Elementary OS. Elementary OS is really unique because it has a modern, fresh look. It's very simple to use. It has a somewhat Mac OS look and feel to it, which is a little different than things like Zorin and Linux Lite, which really tried to cater to Windows users. Elementary OS, I won't say it's necessarily trying to cater to Mac users, but it certainly has that Mac look and feel with the top panel, the top menu system, the bottom centered dock. I know the elementary OS devs don't like it when people say that their desktop looks like the Mac OS desktop, but I think that's a positive. I don't think that's a negative. I think it's good that we have so many Linux distributions, so many desktop environments available that cater to different users. And what really makes elementary kind of Mac-like isn't necessarily just the look and feel of the desktop environment, but Elementary has its own custom suite of applications, so you can think of it kind of almost like the, the Mac OS experience and that everything is its, its own Apple ecosystem, right? Everything is tightly integrated. And to be honest, that tight integration is rather nice because everything really looks good as far as the theming and really it's one of the most clean and polished Linux distributions out there. What we're taking a look at here is the elementary OS file manager here and when I say they have their own custom suite of applications, I mean their custom suite of applications, many of these applications are actually quite impressive. These are not just um, half-assed thrown together kind of programs that somebody wrote in a few days or a few weeks, right? A lot of effort has gone into these applications and to make everything work as a cohesive environment. Again, this is really an impressive project. Some of the standout applications include the App Center. So the App Center is going to check for update, but I'm not going to take an update. If I click the Home tab, you can see the home page of the App Center is your apps are broken down by category. Can I make it full screen there so you can see all the categories? And of course, you can click on the categories or you can do a search here in the search box. Ultimately, the reason Elementary OS is so high on my list here at number three is because Elementary OS created their own desktop environment from the ground up, their own suite of applications. It's basically so much work went into this. I, it really is truly impressive what Elementary OS has accomplished here.
And number two on my list of top five Ubuntu-based distributions is Pop! OS. Pop! OS is built by the good folks over at System76. System76, they sell computers, desktop computers, and laptops with Linux pre-installed. And many years ago, what they were doing is they were shipping computers pre-installed with Ubuntu. Eventually, they built their own Ubuntu-based distribution called Pop! OS. And they have this really unique and customized desktop environment that's built around GNOME. Some some of the standout features with Pop! OS is you have some exceptional driver support, hardware support, being that Pop! OS built by a hardware manufacturer, System76, mainly to support their products, their laptops, for example. But really, you know, if for those of you that maybe have problems with you know, graphics drivers, such as NVIDIA drivers, or maybe you want some good support for a hybrid graphics system, Pop! OS is excellent in that regard. Now, this desktop environment that they're using here Again, it's built on GNOME, but they're actually working on their own uh, custom-built desktop environment that they're writing in Rust. But right now, they're basing off GNOME. This run launcher is really nice, right? We have a menu system here that's rather unique. So they, they have some uh, custom extensions and tweaks to GNOME that I find uh, actually really nice. I think the brand new to Linux user is going to find this desktop environment very easy to use because you have the bottom dock. Uh, everything is in the dock. For those that want more advanced features, you do have the ability to turn on tiling windows. So what this does is it turns on uh, the ability to auto tile windows for it, it makes your uh, cosmic desktop here essentially almost into a tiling window manager. It, it's not quite a tiling window manager, but it does some tiling stuff. Now, what about software? Well, being based on Ubuntu, all of these distributions are going to have a really good choice of software available for you in their software centers. One of the cool things about Pop! OS, their software center here called the Pop Shop, is anything that's available as an Ubuntu package, you'll find in the Pop Shop. Also, anything that's available as a flat pack is also available available in the pop shop. So Flatpak already enabled by default. And I think that is a really nice touch that most desktop Linux users are going to appreciate. One last thing I want to mention is security and privacy. One of the cool things about the pop OS installation process is that by default, it encrypts your drive. You don't have to choose it by default it's going to encrypt your installation and I think that is a really nice touch and to be honest I think probably most Linux distributions probably need to start pushing encryption as the default setting. Ultimately, the reason Pop! OS makes number two on my list is because of just how well put together, how polished. You can tell that this is a professionally made product by a, a real team of developers and partly because there's a company behind it, System76. You can tell this is not Joe Bob's Linux distribution, right? Oh, a lot of effort, a lot of time, a lot of money went into building this and it shows. And number one on my list of top Ubuntu-based distributions is probably not a shock to most people, Linux Mint. Linux Mint has been around forever. I want to say Linux Mint got started, oh, just a couple of years after Ubuntu got started, like three or four years after Ubuntu got started, Linux Mint burst on the scenes and a lot of people moved from Ubuntu to Linux Mint back then because Linux Mint really made Ubuntu easier. And by easier, I mean back in those early days, Ubuntu didn't ship multimedia codecs out of the box. And, you know, there were some hoops to jump through getting certain drivers installed. And Linux Mint made a lot of this stuff much easier. They installed a lot of this stuff, mainly that Canonical, the makers behind Ubuntu, couldn't because of legal issues being a corporate back distribution. They didn't want to take any chances by installing, for example, those multimedia codecs. Well, Linux Mint being a community distribution, they just didn't care, right? They installed the multimedia codecs. And a lot of people installed Linux Mint mainly just for that. And that was what Linux Mint began in the early days. Now, as the years progressed, Linux Mint their mission became much, much more because now they have their own desktop environment that they create called the Cinnamon Desktop Environment. Linux Mint has three different desktop editions. They have a Cinnamon Edition, a Mate Edition, and an XFCE Edition. And one of the great things about those three desktop environments is they look very, very similar, all of them. It doesn't matter which one you use, you're going to have the bottom panel and the start menu. Uh, they're going to have the same look and feel, essentially the same suite of applications, mostly GTK based applications, right? So you're going to have a really consistent UI experience, regardless of whether you use Cinnamon, 
XFCE, or MATE here in Linux Mint. So why has Linux Mint been such a popular desktop distribution? Well, I think one of the big claims to fame with it is the fact that you have this Windows-like experience, right? It's one of those things, especially in, with some of our Linux desktop environments, such as the early versions of GNOME 3 or uh, uh, KDE 4, that they were buggy, they were kind of weird, they, they looked a little different than the old school Windows desktop, which most people are used to. Most Linux users came from Windows. So I want a bottom panel with a start menu. I want traditional looking programs with, you know, the uh, maximize button, the minimize button, and all of that stuff being on the right hand side of my Windows, not the left hand side like the old Mac. You know, you know the uh, people that use Windows are comfortable in Linux Mint, and I think that's why this is such a popular distribution. I've already mentioned driver support, multimedia support, all of that stuff is going to get installed during the installation process. Uh, if for some reason you need to install some of this stuff after the installation process, I mean, I could go search for drivers, and there is the driver manager, if I, I'd have to give it my uh, sudo password. But it's going to look for our proprietary drivers if we need it for our graphics or for Wi-Fi if I was on a laptop. Now I'm in a virtual machine here, so I'm going to close that because it's not going to find any drivers for this VM. Another real plus to Linux Mint is their community. When you talk to people about friendly Linux communities, because every Linux distribution has a community built around it, it seems like most people agree that the Linux Mint community is one of the friendliest and most welcoming communities out there in Linux. And again, I think Think that really makes it perfect for the brand new to Linux user. So there you have it, my top five Ubuntu-based distributions here in 2022. Now, most people, when they give you a top five list, they're usually going to throw out at least one extra, one bonus, you know, an honorable mention. I think I should do that too, because honestly, there is an Ubuntu-based distribution I think is woefully underestimated, undervalued. You don't hear many people talk about it at all. And I want to give an honorable mention to Bode Linux. Bode Linux has its own customized desktop environment called the Moksha desktop environment, which is based on the old Enlightenment desktop environment. Just very briefly, the reason I want to give an honorable mention to Bode is because it's elegant, it's lightweight, it's very minimal. It's perfect for the minimalist. If you're a window manager only kind of user, you're going to love this Moksha desktop environment because it's a full desktop environment. So, you know, you get everything pre-built that, that you're going to need to have a proper desktop experience. But again, it's very small, fast, lightweight. And honestly, it's very customizable. It's very modular. But even out of the box, the default desktop experience that we're looking at right now, I think is quite gorgeous. It's got a little bit of a retro kind of look and feel to it you got a left click menu so click on the desktop and you get your menu system here and, and i really love it I, I just think this is one of the best linux distributions out there that nobody really talks about so there you have it, my top five Ubuntu-based distributions, plus an honorable mention. Do you agree with these six Ubuntu-based distributions that I shared on camera today? Are these, in fact, the best, or do you disagree? If you do disagree, share in the comments down below. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. And, of course, I'm talking about Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, Wes, Why You Bald, Homie, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Daiyokai, George, Lee, Marstrom, Nate, Erjan, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Orchard, Vador, Polytech, Realities, for Us, Rip Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode you just watched, it wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace. A second honorable mention goes to Hannah Montana Linux.